everybody. We'll go ahead and get started. Again, my name is Debbie. I'm from the Math Science Nucleus, and I am a wildlife biologist and a forester. And today we are going to be looking at plants and seeds. Again, I am with the Math Science Nucleus. We're a nonprofit, and we do have a Children's Natural History Museum right here down on Eggers Drive across from Washington High School. We aren't open yet, but hopefully we will be soon. But again, if you want to look for more information, you can visit this website or give us a yell if you've got any questions. So today we are going to be learning about how plants are important for living, how they have a root and a shoot system, how we eat parts of plants and how we eat seeds. When you look at our picture here, a person's watering their plants, so it does take a great deal of care to grow these plants. So these plants, they photosynthesize. That's a big word. All it means is that they make their own food from the sunlight. So if you look at that funny picture, can our plants really dance around like those little daisies are doing? No, not exactly. Our plants can't walk. If they're hungry, they have to make their own food. They can't run off to the grocery store. They can't order pizza. They have to stay where they are because their roots keep them there. And they have to make their own food, again, with photosynthesis. And there are many, many types of plants, really large plants like our trees, small plants, ferns and grasses, even smaller algae. And all these plants require water and nutrients to grow. Now look at this little funny picture. Whoa, what happened to the little bunny? Have you guys ever been swinging on a swing like that and you swing so high, you think you're gonna fall off? Well, this is just talking about how all plants are green. Some plants are very large like that tree. Some are very small like the grass below. And even smaller are those little green dots. Those are little green algae. Those are tiny little plants. So our plants are all sizes. But all of these plants produce oxygen and they provide food for a lot of organisms. Now, looking at this picture of a growing plant, move this over. a plant makes its own food, again, through photosynthesis, and a plant needs sunlight. So if you look at that picture, sunlight's coming down onto those leaves. Those leaves are catching the UV light, ultraviolet light. And then as it's going down, you also see down at the roots. The roots are pulling up water from the soil. Water's H2O, hydrogen and oxygen, bond together to make water. So the sunlight's pulling in from the leaves, water's pulling up. So meanwhile, what's happening is that the plant is breathing out oxygen and taking in carbon dioxide. Well, that's great for us because we breathe out carbon dioxide and we need to breathe in oxygen. So if it weren't for plants, we wouldn't be here either. So our plants, remember, make their own food. They need sunlight, water, and nutrients. And those nutrients, they usually do get from their soil. And in the parts of a plant, we have two parts mainly, the roots and the shoots. So root system is anything underneath the ground. And that's where our water is being collected and our minerals and our nutrients are coming from the soil. And that provides that water to go up for photosynthesis. The top parts of the plants, we'll start off with the flower. Those help with reproduction. Leaves help perform that photosynthesis. Our fruit protects a seed. And the stem is the support of the plant. It's the big structure. All right. So as we think about what you just had for lunch even, what parts of a plant do you eat? If you think about it, you remember, maybe you've never even thought about plants as having parts, but there are definitely parts. So if you are eating, if you're eating a root, if you're eating carrots, can you give me a thumbs up if you like carrots? How about if you're eating potatoes? Thumbs up if you like potatoes? That includes french fries. How about thumbs up if you like onions? Okay, all of those are examples of roots. And flowers, we've got broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage. 
we've got nuts and seeds. And the nuts and seeds, nuts are just a hard covering with a seed on the inside, one seed on the inside. And those are things like corn, beans, rice, pistachios, cashews, all those kinds of nuts. So those are the nuts and seeds. You even eat leaves. You think about the leaves of a tree. Not that you'd run out and eat a leaf from a tree, but you do eat the leaves from lettuce. Those are all leaves, spinach, bok choy, things like that. Fruits, give me a thumbs up if you like oranges. Yeah, you eat the, take the hard skin off, you're left with that pulpy juicy part. That's the soft part that you like to eat. And we don't usually eat the seeds, we spit those back out. How about apples, thumbs up if you like apples. Yeah, because when you cut that apple, same thing, the apple core, it's protecting those seeds. Um, how about tomatoes? That's a fruit too, because it's a hard, it's a juicy um, part with a hard skin on the outside and inside are those little white seeds. So we've got also melons. If you've ever thought about pumpkins, when you're carving pumpkins and you reach inside the pumpkin and you've got all that gooey stuff with the pumpkin seeds, you can even wash those pumpkin seeds and roast those as well. So those are examples of fruits. We also have bark and sap that we eat. Um, if you think about cinnamon and maple syrup, that's the outside of the tree, the bark. And then stalks and stems like celery and asparagus. So there are many, many parts of a plant that you probably eat. So let's get a little closer look at these. Now, this is a picture of some radishes that are out in a field. For the radish, we eat the roots and the leaves. You can see here somebody that's pulling them out. At the bottom picture, you see a little more of the fibrous root that would be pulling in all the water. That radish forms because that's that way of that plant can hold its food, makes that little big bulb, the little red bulb. Now on the radish, again, you can eat the leaves as well as the um, root part. Carrots, if you like carrots, you can eat these raw or cooked. You see a person over here just pulling out one carrot from their garden and you see they've got the leaves up above. They just reach down and pull out that root. This big picture on the right is a machine that can collect hundreds of carrots. If you have a giant commercial field of carrots, you need big machinery like this to do all that harvesting. Look how it just cuts into the ground and pulls the stalk and collects all those carrots, hundreds of carrots. All right, here is another. This is an underground stem for an onion. If you look at this picture, that has the yellow flower blooming. So down below, we've got the roots. Then we've got the food stored in this underground stem. Big, tall stem coming up and the flower opens up. But look at the picture there with the onions in the water. The roots are growing like crazy at first. Then those leaves start to grow. Now look at the two onions in the back. Have they started anything yet? Their roots have started. Here come the leaves. Now, if you have an onion that's been sitting around and you're um, kitchen, sometimes even just on the countertops. Sometimes they will start to grow like that, won't they? And then they're still perfectly fine to eat. It's again, the bulb is part of its stored food. So again, that's fun to watch how fast those roots can grow and how fast the leaves can grow. So that's a time lapse. That's over several days. And now we've also got asparagus. Asparagus is a stem. So the picture shows how the roots are in the bottom in the ground. You've got a big thick stem and it doesn't really have a lot of leaves, does it? The leaves stay real tiny. They don't really grow big like regular leaves. And you can see a handful of the asparagus that's been um, taken from the farm. And we would cook that up. We could either roast it or we could saute it or boil it. And then you see the cooked asparagus there with a little bit of the cheese sauce. So the asparagus in the field you see growing again over time, takes several days, and it's a really pretty ferny looking kind of um, plant. So celery, this is a funny stem. If you look at the celery in the field, it's a pretty fancy plant in the field. Looks all green and feathery on top with the leaves. And then you've got the stalks, the roots are down in the ground. And you see my little guinea pigs, they're eating up their celery stalks. And sometimes people like to um, grind up that celery and make it like a juice. 
usually you use the celery kind of as a dip. Like I like to eat celery cut up with salsa. Um, and in this big machine, when it's harvested from big fields, this machine is cutting it all up for us. So it's cutting off the root that we won't eat. And it, so you can buy sometimes celery in nice little sticks that are already cut. That's what this big machine is doing. But on this celery, yeah, you can eat the stem and sometimes the leaves as well. Now, pistachio trees are fun. This is an orchard of pistachio trees. And you see this, how tiny those little nuts are. This machine helps to harvest those nuts and haul them off then to go to the stores and to get processed. But a nut is just a hard shell with one seed inside, okay? So that hard shell is gonna protect that little seed. Now, this one's kind of funny. This is an almond tree. Oh my goodness, look at that green thing. What's that big green umbrella doing? Oh, they're shaking the tree. What's falling off? The almonds are falling off the tree. So the big plants come onto the tree, hold onto the tree, the big umbrella comes out, and then it starts to shake the tree. And it shakes it just hard enough that all those almonds come falling off and then they're harvested. That's a way better idea than having to get on the ground and pick up all those little teeny almonds, isn't it? So that's pretty clever. An engineer thought of that, that was pretty clever. But these are an almond nut. You see the shape of the almond. Also, we make it into like a spread or almond milk. It's got lots of nutrients. Ooh, cinnamon. If you think of cinnamon, you probably had like a cinnamon bun, like this picture on the top. The brown is the spice. It's kind of made a sweet taste. But the cinnamon is actually the outside bark of a tree. So the outside bark is the hard part that protects the inside of the tree. That bark is hard and protective. But we actually harvest a piece of that bark and you get a little strip of cinnamon. So here's a little small piece. And then usually the cinnamon would be ground up or grinded up and would be in a powder form as well. But again, you're eating the bark of a tree. How about broccoli? Anybody out there like broccoli? When you're eating broccoli, you are eating a flower. Isn't that cool? So it's a flower that hasn't quite bloomed yet because you want to be able to eat that crown, what we call the crown. All those little green bulbs, those are going to turn into these yellow flowers that you see and will produce eventually those red seeds. So broccoli can be a little tricky sometimes if it gets too hot too fast, then it'll bolt, it'll grow too fast, and then all of a sudden you'll get all the flowers. So it's kind of tricky. You got to catch it just right, right before it flowers. Now, here's a little video about growing broccoli. The taste of homegrown broccoli is beyond compare. If you've only ever had store-bought broccoli, you don't know what you're missing. Hi, I'm Chelsea Fields, and it's early spring here at Fort Hook Farm, which means it's time to get our broccoli plants in the ground. Broccoli is best set out in the garden as pre-started plants. Since it enjoys the cool weather of early spring or late fall, you'll want to start seeds indoors six to eight weeks before setting them out. Planting broccoli is incredibly easy. First, you'll want to dig a hole twice the size of the root ball. This is necessary to give the roots the room that they need to grow and expand. Now gently set the root ball just slightly below ground level. Backfill the hole with soil. Gently firm the soil to set the plant in its new home. Now one tip that I always recommend to growing perfect broccoli is to mulch around your plant. This is gonna to help to retain soil moisture and also soil temperature as your plant grows strong and healthy through the season. Now to plant the rest of your broccoli plants, you'll want to space them 12 inches away from one another in every direction. I recommend planting a minimum of six plants. That's all there is to growing your own gourmet broccoli. Just make sure they have plenty of water and plenty of sunlight and they'll do the rest. Happy gardening. Okay. So that gives us an idea of how much work it takes for some gardening. Now she's got some large elevated beds, but you can plant broccoli in just a small pot. You don't have to have a huge field, a huge farm. You can just do a few small containers. All right, let's see. Hopefully everyone sees a screen that has lettuce on it. Can you give me a thumbs up if you see lettuce? 
All right, good. All right, so we see a person harvesting some lettuce. You see how that lettuce is twirling. The lettuce just grows leaf by leaf by leaf by leaf. I can actually go out to a garden or a pot. I can cut off just a couple pieces of leaves that I might need for dinner. And then the plant just is gonna keep on growing, just keep on growing. Look at the bottom picture. You see all the different varieties. So if you can go to the grocery store or the farmer's market, it's really fun to look at all the types just of lettuce, all the different colors of green. There's green lettuce, romaine, iceberg, uh, curly, red lettuce. There's just so many varieties. Um, so again, it's pretty amazing that this plant is really easy to grow. It's a good simple one to start with. And I've just started some seeds about two weeks ago and I already have some good lettuce plants going. Oh, can you tell what this is? The spinach. Now this also grows straight crop kind of like the lettuce where you can go out and just pick a few leaves that you might want. And you see our little rabbit there. He's eating the full leaf and the little stem, the petiole that attaches to the rest of the plant. Seems to like it all. Now this spinach, you can eat raw. We usually cook it too. You can mix it into dips. Um, all different ways to use the spinach. Sometimes it comes in a can, it can be frozen, lots of ways to use this spinach. Um, again, it's very full of nutrients. It's great for us. Bunny rabbit likes it too, huh? All right, this is the zucchini. Zucchini, you can eat the flower and the fruit. Now this is kind of hard to watch. Keep an eye on that flower. There, it's starting now. So it's going through and as it, the flower gets smaller, the fruit gets bigger. Okay, and it kind of grows like a vine. The seeds are on the inside of that fruit. So when you cut up a zucchini, you can, when you cut it up, you can see the little seeds, but they're pretty flat and small. We usually eat the, eat the seeds and you don't even have to peel the outside off of the zucchini. That's the skin is so thin, you can eat that very well. So again, for zucchini, we eat the flower and the seeds. Now, this is a funny one. This is artichoke. And you've got to know about artichokes if you live in California, because California is the primary producer of artichokes. And if you look at those flowers blooming at the top, look at how they just keep blooming and blooming. So it comes out, there we go, just now starts. So for the artichoke, we want to harvest it right before it blooms, right before it starts to open up like that. Now, if I'm a farmer, I might keep some of these flowers and keep some of the seeds, but if I want to eat it, I'm gonna harvest it right before it flowers. If you look at the bottom field, can you put your finger on one artichoke? How about two, three, four? How many artichokes do you think are in this field? It's a lot of artichokes. And we cook them in different ways, eat them in different ways. You see here, we're just sauteing them up. And the artichoke, we eat all of the outside flour, all of those outside petals. There's just a part in the middle, that center choke that we cut out and don't eat. So artichokes, they're very important crop in California. There's even an artichoke festival coming up in May in um, Castroville. <laughs> so let's see, look at another fruit. Tomatoes, we use tomatoes in a lot of different ways. You see a tomato plant there in the middle. Again, they're all different kinds of tomatoes, different ways they can grow. We can eat these tomatoes raw or cooked. You see the person that's cutting them there. The plant is protecting that seed. See the small little white seed on the inside? Yeah, but it's got that fleshy fruit on the outside protecting those seeds. And now if you look far to the other side, look at all the different kinds of tomatoes. Tiny little tomatoes, yellow tomatoes, purple tomatoes, and even different shapes. There's so many different kinds. That's another fun thing to go to your local farmer's market or to the grocery store, just to look at and see what kind of tomatoes there are. Um, again, they usually all have a little yellow flower that creates the seed. And even other animals like this little turtle is running to eat this tomato. All right. Oh no, look at this face. Let's look at our lemons. 
Lemons are fruits that grow on trees. And we use the juice and the pulp from the fruit. We don't eat the seed. Sometimes we even can zest some of the outside skin. But why is that little baby making such a sour face? Ooh, have you ever had straight lemon? Ooh, it's sour. Look at all that juice though. So if you've ever tried to make your own lemonade, that's a fun experiment as well. Try to figure out how much lemon and how much sugar you actually need before you make a face like this little guy. All right, so all these things in this pictures and things I've been telling you about, these are all fruits or vegetables. Why do we use those two words, fruit, vegetable? Scientifically, a fruit protects a seed, okay? So everything we've talked about, a fruit protects the seed. But if you're a cook in culinary terms, so if you're in the kitchen cooking, a fruit is something that's sweet, a sweet part of the plant. So the term vegetable is a culinary term. It's not a scientific term, okay? And it doesn't really matter. Vegetable is still part of a plant that can be eaten. So however you want to use the words, um, it's hard to distinguish sometimes, but scientifically you've seen the parts that we're talking about where a fruit has protecting that seed, okay? All right, so as far as fruits and vegetables, that's up to you how you want to use those words. But specifically with fruits, maybe this picture will help. So we've got a couple different fruits here. We've got the big watermelon, has a big rind. The outside rind is again, protecting that soft, mushy part of the watermelon. And then you have those little black seeds. So that hard rind helps the water stay in there and helps protect those seeds. Now the next group we've got like peaches. Those have a hard pit on the inside. Then I see a pear and an apple, same thing. It's got a core where it's protecting those seeds and even things like our cherries and plums where the soft outside protects that seed on the inside. So again, a fruit is protecting the seed in botany. Botany is the science, the study of plants. And in culinary terms and cooking terms, it's the sweet tasting part. So a tomato is really scientifically a fruit, but in the culinary or cooking world, we call it a vegetable. Does it matter? It doesn't. Just as long as you know, we're talking about different plant parts. All right, another part that's so important are seeds. And these seeds are important to our health our existence. A lot of them go into the cereals that we eat. They're the grains that we use to make bread. They are full of nutrients that give to us, help us grow and reproduce. So now look at all these different types of seeds. You may or may not know what these different seeds are, but I'm gonna ask you to kind of do your own experiment at home. Let's watch these growing. to germinate, to fully grow from a seed to a harvestable plant. 
All right, now we also have sprouts. And sprouts are really fun. Those are just baby plants of lots of different kinds. Um, if you see though in this picture to the left where the roots, the roots grow first, right? Then one leaf, then two, then the stem gets bigger. Again, watch the roots. Watch how fast those grow. And then the little stems go up. Same thing with the picture on the right, the smaller grass looking. Again, it's called a sprout if we harvest it now before it fully grows. Okay, almost of any beans of any type, broccoli sprouts, um, as long as they're small and tender is a sprout. But those are always fun to watch how fast they grow. All right, so here's your experiment that you can do at home. It's just to look and see if you eat any seeds. So all you're gonna do is do a little exploring, okay? You're gonna see if you can find some seeds, just seeds, and see if you can figure out what they are. I started out with this big container of seeds. Some of them I knew, some of them I didn't. Let me show you how we did this. We're going to look at your house and see if you can find any seeds that you eat at home. We're going to put it in a display like this on a small paper plate. All you're going to do, take a small plate, I'm going to use a ruler, and just guess at what makes the plate about halfway, and use a marker. And then I'm going to, again, try to guess about halfway again and use my marker. And then once you've looked around your pantry, mom and dad maybe have helped you, you might be able to find a group of seeds like this. These are all kinds of different beans. So as you eat the different beans, you may find you know more than you think. Here's a small piece of corn. Maybe you recognize black beans. Maybe you recognize a pinto bean. Again, see what seeds you eat. All right, now I will have to say, I'm gonna hold this screen right here for a minute so you, that you can see. We were able to label corn, lentil, sunflower, and beans. But I didn't know what a lot of the beans were. I eat them, I eat them when they're cooked for me or if I cook them, but I don't necessarily pay attention if I know they're in a recipe. But these, I, you see on the back, it says lima beans. So that's a big white bean. One of the other beans I had in there that I wasn't sure of was the black eyed pea. So when you start looking at your beans, like the black eyed pea is kind of a white bean with a little brown or black spot in the middle. And that little spot is where the first root comes out and the water goes into a bean. Usually with these kind of seeds, you have to soak them for several hours or overnight before you can cook them the next day. All right, so let's look at, so all you have to do is just kind of look around, see what kind of seeds you might have at your house. Okay, and then see if you can find out what they are by looking at bags or looking them up in books. All right, let's continue. Now we have a lot of grasses and grains, cereals that we use. The picture up on the top shows you this big grassy piece with those three small little seeds. And that's the part that we have to harvest. So we have to cut the grass and then we have to separate the seed from the rest of the plant. Okay, so this is oats. And if you see at the bottom, look at the oats that are waving in the wind, a little bit of rain and dew on them. But these oats, again, are used as a cereal. They're seeds that are used to make oatmeal and they are a type of grass. Okay, another grass is rice. And we eat that as a cereal, steamed, and it's eaten with many kinds of foods. It is the most important to humans. Worldwide, rice is probably the most important grass or grain. And there are many, many different varieties. Um, see the long leaves? It has very long leaves. And then the grass is up in these top parts. Again, it has to be the rice seed has to be separated from the husk or the shell. And look at these people, they're harvesting. Rice grows with a lot of water. 
Okay, again, they're different varieties, but most of them do require a lot of water. Again, Rice Krispies is one of my favorites that uses rice. Soybeans. Now, when you're driving down the road, sometimes you see these large fields of, of soybeans. And you can see this gentleman, he's pulled up one plant and one plant has many, many seed pods on it. They kind of grow as a cluster, right? So we use this soybean again, it has its outer husk, the beans are inside. And that's what we use for our soy milk, our tofu, soy sauce, they're high in protein and they're a legume. But again, you can see how it grows in the clusters. So I, as big as that field is, I hope he has some machines that help him do that harvesting. How about this? Sunflower seeds. Look at that field. Can you make a guess, an estimate as to how many sunflowers you think are in that field? And what's funny about the sunflowers is during the day as the sun moves through the sky, the head of the sunflower is gonna follow the sun. So they look different directions. But when it's time to harvest our sunflower seeds, it's actually in the middle of that flower. So you have the yellow petals and the seeds are what form on that head. And the seed can be used for oil. It's used in breads, um, flower decorations, used lots of different ways. And again, lots of different varieties. So those are our sunflower seeds. Now these pinto beans, this is another great source of protein. And this is a bean that can be cooked and then refried. And the pinto bean is funny because look on the outside of that pod. See how it's got kind of red mottled colors all over it, red and cream. That same color follows through to the seed. Look at those seeds. They even have the little marks on them. Now the pinto beans do have to be soaked for several hours. If you eat just a pinto bean by itself, you might get sick. If you soak them for a couple hours though, before you cook them, then you're good. Okay, so again, with all of these seeds, you've got to make sure that you know um, what you're after, what you, if it's safe to eat, there's a good, showing you a good picture when it comes out and it again can be mashed and then refried again. All right, a pea. Now, this is another food source that's in the bean family. They're snap peas, sugar peas, all kinds of peas. But look how they're all in a row. All those seeds are like the same little size. Have you ever heard the term, if, like your two peas in a pod? That's what we're talking about. The pod is the outside covering that protects those little seeds that are inside. So this person has picked these pods probably out of their own garden and they've got to separate the pod and pull out those peas before they can be used to be eaten. And again, those can be eaten plain, they can be cooked, um, stewed all different ways. So that is the pea. Now, this is another important grain, wheat. You see the picture at the top, the wheat seed is inside that little packet. So a processor has to kind of open that little packet to break out, there you see it at the bottom, that little seed. That seed is then ground, smushed up, and it's made into a flower. And then sometimes it's bleached to become a white flower. Sometimes it's left this brownish color, but we use that flour in lots of different things like the flour tortilla you see there. And you see, as he's walking through this field, you can see how the big leaves help support the plant and the stems, but it's just that little top part that we're harvesting that makes the seed, okay? Now you're gonna do some investigating as well, because you may find wheat, some word recognitions. You see that word wheat? What I found was I had a box of pasta and I started looking around on this box of pasta where it says ingredients, okay? Where it says ingredients and I recognized the same word wheat. So again, this is another activity you can do is just start looking around your house and finding if you indeed use any of these grains and seeds in your foods that you like to eat. Corn. 
You ever run through a cornfield? Corn grows higher than you go, it's taller than even me. Here you see the ears of the corn grow off of the stalk. Sometimes in the store, you can find the corn with the corn on the cob, you have to pull back the green part. Then there's some silk in there, like little tassel things, before you see that ear of corn that we have drawn up at the top. Now that corn can be harvested, it can be eaten direct, it can be harvested and made into like a cornmeal, like if you like corn muffins. Um, it can be roasted to make a nut. It's used a lot for humans to eat as well as animals to eat. Um, think of cereals, cornflakes, popcorn, corn tortillas. If you've ever watched mom or dad cook, they use corn syrup or corn oil. Okay, all of those are products just from our field of corn there. All right, now we're gonna end with this Seeds We Eat booklet. Now teachers, that this is something that you can download um, from the same site that you registered. Kids, if you've got this sheet already, that's great. If not, don't worry about it. Your teachers will get it to you. And it's just gonna go over some of the things I just showed you some pictures of. Let me give you an idea of what you need to do. For this activity, Seeds in My World, you need a worksheet that your teachers will give you some crayons so that you can color the worksheet, some glue so you can put that worksheet together, a stapler, and a pair of scissors, along with two pieces of paper. Now the plain two pieces of paper, you're just gonna fold over in half like this. And I've already done another one. And all you're going to do is just cut right here where it's folded. And you're gonna cut it all the way through and then I've got two pieces here. I've already done my other sheet. Stack them all up, fold it over in half again, and you can staple on the outside or you can find the middle and staple it again. I always like to staple it kind of in the middle there. All right, so I'm just gonna move it in, staple it right there, and that's created my booklet. Now your booklet, you can use your imagination and you can make your, co your cover the way that you want to. I just put seeds in my world, the seeds that I eat. So once you get your worksheet all colored up, you see here I've colored mine. Again, using your imagination, you're just going to cut the different sections out. And then in your worksheet, you're, with those little worksheets, once they're colored, you just glue them into your booklet. And then as you're walking around your house and you're eating your meals through the week, you want to see if you eat any of these seeds. For example, rice. I eat Rice Krispies. I eat brown rice and I have some rice crackers that I like. So let's see what kind of seeds you eat. All right, so that gives you an idea. This is my booklet again that I made. I'm just gonna leave that frame on right there so you can see it. And if you can see the little booklet I'm holding up. So I just started writing down. I just started keeping track. Through the week as I was eating different plants, I wrote down anytime I ate something with corn. I realized I ate popcorn, the tortilla chips, corn on the cob, a corn casserole, and corn muffins. And then I also found out that I ate some peas. Remember our pea pod? But the peas that I ate weren't like fresh like we saw in our video. They were from a can. So sometimes your vegetables um, and fruits come canned or frozen. Um, I also ate rice, the Rice Krispies, the brown rice. And I have some rice crackers that I really like. And let's see, the oats, the different oats that we have go into breads. I found out even on the bread aisle that you can that you can eat all different kinds. They can use potatoes with bread. So again, with my booklet, again, I just used it to kind of keep track of things that I ate. Um, like one night I made spaghetti and that's when I realized that I had in my thin spaghetti, that's where I found just the word recognition. I found the word wheat. Now this is a different kind of wheat than the wheat that goes into bread. 
Okay, that is different. I also found with my spaghetti, look at this fruit, tomato, right? It could be a fruit or a vegetable. Scientifically, it's a fruit. But I found that that was, see, that's a vegetable that comes in a can. I also found when I was making spaghetti, I had some of these. Now I used a little bit of this black pepper. You guys have any idea what the original pepper looks like? It's a small hard seed. Sometimes you have a pepper grinder where you have to smush the pepper yourself. So again, this is a plant part that's a seed. Also in the spaghetti, I used a little bit of oregano. Now these were a leaf. So that's a leaf that's been harvested and crushed up. 